Now let's look at a scenario where we want to recover some data for a particular mailbox without necessarily restoring the entire database back over the top of the existing database. Now we can do that using what is called a recovery database. And a recovery database essentially allows us to mount a copy of the database on an exchange server without having any impact on the live copy of that same database. So we can use a recovery database to mount a copy of a database from the same server, or we could even use a recovery database to mount a copy of a database from a different server, as long as that server is from the same exchange organization. So let's demonstrate how that's done. And to set the scene, what we'll do is we'll look at all of the email for Sarah Baker's mailbox from three weeks ago, or three weeks or more, and we'll just delete all of those messages. I'm going to empty the deleted items as well. Now let's pretend for the purposes of this demonstration that there's no other way at the moment that we can get that data back. So it's been deleted, deleted items has been emptied, and the retention period on the database has passed. So the data is effectively unable to be recovered through Outlook or from any other method other than going to our backup. So we'll go back to our server and we'll start another recovery. So again, the backup is stored on this server and we'll use the same backup set that was taken at 8.16 p.m. And this time, instead of doing an application recovery, we're just going to do a recovery of files and folders. So we can browse through our backup set here and find the database file for DB2. And we can restore that to another location. So we don't have to restore it back to where it was originally. We can restore it to a different location. And I'm just going to place that in my D drive. I'm going to put, call it recovery DB. So I'll just double check that drive letter. Make sure I've got enough space there. It's actually the E drive I should be using there. And we just have to create that folder first. All right, when you're ready, just click the recover button. And again, that recovery will take maybe a few minutes, maybe longer, depending on the size of your database. See mine's running pretty quickly here because the database is only 1.2 gigabytes in size. So that's completed in no time at all. Now we also want to recover the transaction logs. And I'm just going to restore them to the same drive into this recovery logs folder. So we start another recovery in Windows Server Backup. From the same backup set, we choose files and folders again. And this time we'll choose the DB2 transaction log files. Put them to another location, the E drive recovery logs. Double check that it's going to restore the files we want. And again, just wait a few minutes for that to complete, depending on how many log files you need to recover. All right, so that's completed in no time again. All right, we're done with Windows Server Backup for now. We can see we've got our recovered database and our recovered logs. Now, if we were to create the recovery database at this point, the database wouldn't mount. And the reason for this is that the restored database is in what is known as a dirty shutdown state. The way we can verify that 
is by opening a command prompt. Navigating to the location where the database file is stored. So that's eRecoveryDB in my case here. And we run the ESCUtil command with the slash mh parameter. And then the name of the file, db2.edb. And I'll just scroll back up here. And what we're looking for is the state you can see here is marked as dirty shutdown. So what we need to do is get this database file into a clean shutdown state before we're able to mount it in our recovery database. And the way we do that is by performing a soft recovery with this ESCUtil command. So we have log files in this eDrive recovery logs folder and the log file name prefix is E01. You can see they're all named E01. Now we can check that all of the log files are undamaged by changing to the log file directory and running ESCUtil ML with the log file prefix of E01 in my case and we get a good result that no damaged log files were found. So I'll switch back to the database folder. So now let's try that ESCUtil soft recovery. The command we want to run is ESCUtil, the slash R parameter for soft recovery. The log file prefix name, which is E01. The path to the log files, which is e recovery logs, and the path to the database file, so e recovery db. Now that's not the full path, you don't have to include the file name itself, you just have to put the folder name in that that database file is stored in. So that soft recovery operation was successful. Let's run ESCUtil with the MH switch again. And now we can see that the database file is in a state of clean shutdown, which means it will be mountable in our recovery database. So we're finished now with our command prompt. And we need to go into the exchange management shell. So now we're going to run a PowerShell command to create the recovery database. We're going to use the new mailbox database commandlet. I'll specify my server name of ebcex1. We'll call the database recovery db. That's just the name. That's not what actually tells it to be a recovery database. To do that, we need to include the recovery switch. Set the EDB file path to the location where we recovered those files. So that's recovery db, db2.edb in my case. Set the log folder path to the location where those recovered log files are. And we'll just press enter. We get this warning that the recovery database was created using existing file, db2, because there was already a file in that path. The database must be brought into a clean shutdown state before it can be mounted. Well, we've already done that. And then we just get the standard warning about restarting the Exchange Information Store service, which you may recall from an earlier lesson. That just has to do with the memory allocation to each uh, database process on the server. So I'm not actually going to worry about restarting the information store in this case. I'm just going to go ahead and see if I can mount my recovery database. It looks like that mount operation was successful. Let's have a look at all of the databases here 
can see the DB1, DB2 and Archive DBs are still there. And another database called Recovery DB is now present. And this recovery value is set to true. So you can tell the difference between a recovery database and a regular database in your PowerShell output there. So now that we've got the recovery database mounted, let's have a look at what's actually available in there. So we can use the get mailbox statistics commandlet to have a look at the recovery DB. It's quite a lot of output there. Now hopefully somewhere in there is our Sarah Baker, there she is. So her mailbox is available in that recovery database and we can see that it has 75 items available in it. I'm just going to get another PowerShell session going here. So there's 75 items in the recovery database for her mailbox. Let's have a look at how many are in her actual mailbox. Just format that a little bit differently. So at the moment there's only 17 items in her mailbox, which is a few inbox items and some sent items. So, so now we get to perform the mailbox restore operation and we do that using a mailbox restore request. So we know that the items were lost from the inbox. So let's look at restoring just the inbox for that mailbox using a mailbox restore request. So we run the new mailbox restore request commandlet. We specify a source database, so that is recovery DB. A source store mailbox, so that is Sarah Baker. A target mailbox, so that is Sarah Baker again. And we want to include just the inbox. So we can see that that mailbox restore has been queued. If we run the get mailbox restore request commandlet, we can see that it's now in progress and we can even look at the statistics of that restore request and see that it's currently at 0% complete and we have a status, interesting status here saying it is stalled due to CI, CI meaning content index. So I've actually got a problem with my database health that is preventing that restore from taking place. Let's have a look over here at my database copy status. And yes, DB2 has a failed content index. Now that's probably as a result of our earlier database recovery. So let's see if we can fix that up. So the first thing I'll try is simply restarting the Exchange Search Services. So 
So we'll pop back here, we'll just stop that search host controller. And this time I'll just delete the uh, index folder for that database. And we'll start that service again and see if we can rebuild that index. Okay, after a few moments that index looks like it's being rebuilt. Okay, it took a little while but we're back in business now. DB2 has a healthy index state. DB1's gone failed but I think uh, that'll recover on its own shortly so at any rate that shouldn't impact our Malworks restore request. Let's see how that's going now. Alright, so we fixed our little CI problem that was stalling the uh, mailbox restore request. And it was able to progress, it's at 100% complete, still in the copying messages phase. So the item count is now up to 84, whereas previously it was uh, quite low, it was 17 I think it was. So that restore is obviously either completed or is still just in the process of completing. And since we were restoring the inbox, we should be able to go back into Outlook Web Access. And there you have it without even needing to refresh. Those inbox items from three weeks ago and earlier are now back in the mailbox. So that's recovering one folder for a particular mailbox back into the original mailbox uh, that it came from. Let's have a look at a different scenario that demonstrates two other methods. Now the first thing I want to demonstrate is how to recover a mailbox into a different mailbox. So in other words, we could be rest uh, restoring Sarah Baker's email into Alan Reed's mailbox. But another way in which you can use this is if you have a mailbox that's been deleted and you've created a new mailbox for that person, when you're recovering from that backup, it is actually the same as if you were restoring into a different mailbox. So you would have to use the same technique that I'm about to demonstrate when it comes to uh, restoring into different mailboxes. Now the other thing I'm going to demonstrate is how to direct the restore into a specific target root folder so that you're not restoring the items back into their original location. So for example, the inbox items are not going back to the inbox folder, but instead you're restoring into a folder within the mailbox, which allows you to look at the mail separately and sort through it and do whatever you want from that point on. So to set this up, what I'll do is I'll just log off uh, from Sarah, Sarah's account and we'll get logged back on as Alan Reed so that we can see uh, his mailbox as the restore is taking place. And we can use Outlook for this. We don't have to use Outlook Web App. All right, so there's Alan's mailbox. That's gonna update because it's in uh, offline mode and it's the first time we've logged on with him for a little while. So we'll just leave that alone to update. I'll jump back over to the server. And again, we're going to do a new mailbox restore request from the source database recovery DB. The source store mailbox is Sarah Baker. The target mailbox is Alan Reed. We want to allow legacy DN mismatch. So this is the switch that allows us to restore into different mailboxes. And we're going to use a target root folder of restored items. Sarah Baker. So that mailbox restore request has been queued. The 
Restore is underway. It's about 5% through, doing an initial seeding process. So now it's 10% complete. It's now copying messages. We can already see in Alan's mailbox, this restored item Sarah Baker folder has appeared. And we can expand that and see the full mailbox contents that are being restored. At the moment, the inbox is empty because the restore is still underway. So let's go back to our server and just have a look and see how far along that's gone. It's still only up to 10%. Interesting that we've run into another stall, this time due to right to CPU. So you can see these uh, mailbox restore requests are uh, dependent on available resources on the server. They will stop or back off if there's any resource constraints or any technical issues such as that content index uh, issue we saw earlier. I had pretty high CPU utilization there for a short period of time. Looks like it spiked up again, so no surprise then that the uh, mailbox restore request might stall. And it looks like it's just got to do in this case with this node runner process which relates to the exchange search services. And I would say the reason for that is that one of my indexes is in a crawling state at the moment. So we'll just give that a little bit of time to finish. I'm sure the CPU will calm down again. And uh, the mailbox restore request will be able to complete. All right, my CPU has finally calmed down. Uh, as the index has stopped crawling, it's now healthy. That's great news. And over here we can see that the mailbox restore request is now actually also complete. So once that CPU stall condition cleared, the restore completed pretty quickly. And here in Alan Reed's mailbox, looking in this restored items folder, we can see now all these items are populated. So that demonstrates how you can restore from a recovery database, not only to a different mailbox than the original mailbox, but also into a different folder than the original items were stored in. So after all of our recovery tasks are complete, we can go in and tidy up a bit after ourselves by removing the recovery database. So we'll just start by dismounting the recovery database. Then we can remove the mailbox database. And this warning just reminds us that the files themselves will be left on the file system. We just need to manually delete those. So I've deleted those files. You can see I'm having a little trouble deleting the uh, database folder. Possibly there's a process on the server uh, locking that folder at the moment. Maybe that command prompt. And closing down that command prompt, which still had that folder open, that's freed it up. The folder has been deleted. So once again, just after completing all of our recovery tasks, we can just tidy up after ourselves by removing, uh, dismounting the database, removing the mailbox database, and then manually deleting the files themselves.